Achievable is the best learning program available today for the SIE exam. To learn more and to gain access to a free trial, go to achievable.me. Bond price volatility is not going to be the easiest topic that you're going to learn throughout this material, but it's a very important topic to understand for the test. FINRA loves asking questions on bonds, and this is one of the most tested areas of bonds. Expect to see this on your SIE and your top-off exam as you make your way through all this material. Let's take a look at a practice question that could be very similar to something that you would see on the real exam. If you want to, pause the video, take a look at the question, and see if you can answer it yourself. When you hit play, we'll go through it together and talk through why the answer is the answer. Okay, this one's not exactly easy, but let's see how confident you are in your answer. We have a customer that's looking for as much stability in price as possible, which is a fancy way of saying we don't want to see a lot of ups and downs or big swings in our market value. If I go to sleep and that bond is worth $1,000, I want to wake up tomorrow seeing that the bond is going to be somewhat close to $1,000. And no matter what happens in the market, it's just not going to move that much in price. And it looks like they're going to be investing in one of four different bonds, and we need to pick out the bond that is going to exhibit that type of characteristic. This question is focusing on stability of prices, but what we've talked about in this chapter is bond volatility meaning what type of bond moves the most in price. And as we've learned, the bond that has the longest maturity and the lowest coupon is the one that moves the most in price. With any investment, the more time that's involved, the more bad or the more risk that you face. Just think about it. If you're buying a 30-year bond from some company, you're betting that they're going to be able to survive as a company and evolve over the next 30 years and that they're eventually going to be able to pay that money back to you. And if anything happens in the meantime that makes it seem like they're getting into any kind of trouble, you're going to find the price of that bond drop pretty drastically or vice versa. If anything great happens with that bond, you're going to see the price go up pretty drastically as well. But the bottom line is that the more time involved on a bond, the more fluctuation situations in price that you generally see. So if bond volatility is related to long-term maturities and low coupons, then stability must be the exact opposite. The bond exhibiting the most price stability will be a bond with a short-term maturity and a high coupon. And the bond that exhibits those characteristics the most will be the right answer. There is a wide range of maturities that we have in front of us. At the low end, we have 10 years, and at the high end, we have 30 years. And really simply, we see that the 10-year bond is the one with the shortest term maturity. Therefore, that likely is the best answer that they're looking for. When it comes to bond price stability or volatility, the maturity is the most important aspect. And the coupon really only come into play if you have two bonds that have similar maturities. So with that information, I can tell you right away, if you went with A, A is the right answer. By far, that is the shortest term maturity, therefore it will exhibit the most price stability. Now, if you had another 10 year bond up there, you would be looking for the bond that has the higher coupon of the two, given that we're looking for short maturities and high coupons when it comes to price stability. Good news, you didn't need to worry about that, so this one was pretty plain and simple. But before we go, let's flip it on its head. What if they asked us what bond has the most price volatility? Well, we need to go back to what we know about price volatility, which is the bond that has the longest maturity and the lowest coupon, and we can find the answer pretty quickly here as well. Well, the longest term bond up here is the 30 year strip. Now a strip is a US government zero coupon bond, which means this bond pays no interest to you over the life of the bond. The way you make money on these is that you buy it at a deep discount and it matures at par later down the road. For example, you might be able to buy a strip today for $400 and the US government would return $1,000 to you at maturity, the difference being your interest you receive over the life of the bond, even though you didn't see any of that along the way. Regardless of all that, the 30-year strip meets both characteristics perfectly. It's a long-term bond with a low coupon, or actually the lowest coupon you can have being 0%. And when we have those two characteristics together, we have the most price volatile bond. When things change in the market, this bond will fluctuate high up in price or low down in price, depending on what it is that happens.